Hi, today we will talk about hypothesis testing in mathematical statistics. Uh, this is the start of a big uh, topic uh, as uh, actually almost all problems that are solved uh, by means of mathematical statistics are either estimation problems or the hypothesis testing problems. So that is why it is very important to, to understand this uh, uh, concept of hypothesis testing and the, the mechanics of uh, algorithms we are using to solve problems of this kind. So let's start. Uh, the first thing that is to be understood is what type of hypothesis we are testing here. So. Uh, we can test not all hypotheses, but statistical hypotheses. So what does it mean? What do we mean saying a statistical hypothesis? This is uh, any, any suppose, any, any hypothesis about the parameters, distribution or properties of a random variable or uh, of several random variables. So if we have a, a random variable that can be observed, so such random variable that we can get observations of this variable, uh, a sample, uh, and we have a hypothesis so that, for example, the expected value of this random variable is equal to some number or that this random variable follows some distribution or that uh, this random variable is independent from another random variable and so on. So any kind of a hypothesis of a supposition uh, about a random variable can be uh, just um, accepted as a statistical hypothesis. So as hypothesis that we are trying to test in our real life, they are not about random variables. So the first step in these problems is to, to translate a hypothesis from our ordinary human language to the, to the language of probability theory. So how this can be done, for example. Uh, for example, you can say that um, I have a coin and my hypothesis is that uh, the hypothesis I'm going to test is that this coin is a fair coin. So this means that, uh, so what do we mean saying a fair coin? This means that when we flip this coin, we get heads with probability one half and we get tails with probability one half. So to test this hypothesis that the coin is fair, we'll do what? We'll flip this coin many times to get observations and so we'll, we'll get, uh, we'll have a series of flippings and we can say that number of heads, for example, number of heads in this series of flippings, let's say there will be 100 flippings. Number of heads in this series of 100 flippings is a random variable that follows binomial distribution with parameters 100 and p. And p is probability of getting heads in each single flipping. And so if our hypothesis is true, if the coin is fair, then p is equal to one half. So a fair coin is such a coin that the probability of getting heads is one half and probability of getting tails also. So uh, instead of saying that we want to test a hypothesis that the coin is fair, we can say we want to test a hypothesis that uh, random variable x that is equal to the number of heads in 100 of flippings of this coin follows binomial distribution with parameters uh, 100 and 1 half. So this is the hypothesis. Or, or we can say that the second parameter of this, of this x is equal to 1 half, so probability of success in this series of trials. So that is how we can translate a hypothesis from the human language to the mathematical language. Um, 
actually in applied problems uh, often very often the one who do this translation is not yourself you just um, your your task is to choose one of several well-known types of hypothesis testing problems so you see the the problem and then you understand aha so what i have here is just uh, for example uh, an ANOVA problem or uh, this is a hypothesis on equal of means or something like this so you, you just understand which type of, of problem you have here okay so you have a hypothesis you want to test what you should know then you should know something about a classification of hypothesis so uh, all hypotheses are either simple or composite so what is the difference uh, simple a simple hypothesis allows only one just one single option uh, for the <coughs> the parameter or the distribution or some property so uh, if this is a hypothesis on a dist on a on a parameter so it then it allows just one single option for the parameter for example uh, we can say that uh, there is a parameter p and hypothesis that p is equal to 2 is a simple hypothesis as it allows this hypothesis is true only if p is equal to to any other values make this hypothesis false so if p is equal not to 2 but 2.0001 then it means that the hypothesis is false so only one single value is allowed and if we if our hypothesis is that this p is greater than 2 then this is a composite hypothesis as multiple values of p are allowed so p can be equal to 3 to 45 to 2.0001 so and all these values are allowed so all these values make the hypothesis true so th that is the difference or second example uh, hypothesis that x follows normal distribution with parameters 0 and 16 this is a, a simple hypothesis as only one distribution is allowed and the hypothesis that x follows normal distribution with some parameters normal distribution with any parameters is a composite hypothesis as multiple distributions are allowed any distribution of these set of distributions uh, can make this hypothesis true so if x follows normal distribution with parameters 0 and 16 if x follows normal distribution with parameters 2 and 25 if x follows this normal distribution with parameters minus 3 and 4 and so on so all these distribution that belong to this class of normal distributions they all are accepted here so they all make the hypothesis true so multiple options are allowed by this hypothesis so this is a composite hypothesis so uh, this difference is very important as uh, as you see a little bit later then uh, another uh, another classification is division between parametrical and non-parametrical hypothesis so the the mean just uh, the, the meaning um, can be understood just from the name so parametrical a parametrical hypothesis is a hypothesis on a parameter and a non-parametrical hypothesis is a hypothesis on some property of a random variable so uh, if you have a parameter and your hypothesis is that this parameter is equal to some value or greater than some value or less than some value or belongs to some interval these all are parametrical hypotheses. If you have a hypothesis that a random variable of your interest follows some distribution or uh, a pair of random variables are dependent or independent or this random variable is discrete or continuous or something like this, so all these are non-parametrical hypotheses. Um, this division 
between parametrical and non-parametrical hypotheses is not of, of so great importance for us. But what you should know that um, for parametrical hypotheses, it is possible to choose to find uh, the best test. So um, when you know that that hypothesis is a parametrical hypothesis, there is the best test uh, you can choose of several possible tests that can be used to test this hypothesis, the, be the best one. And for non-parametrical hypothesis, it is impossible. So this is an unsolvable problem, problem of choosing the best test. And uh, very often you see that for a non-parametrical hypothesis, several tests are proposed to test this hypothesis. And so there is no answer which one is the best one. So you can choose any of several possible tests. And so... Um, and, and to apply this. So if you open even a textbook on, on mathematical statistics, you will see that for um, parametrical hypothesis, only one test is given in a book, and for non-parametrical, often two, three, even four, five tests are proposed. And they don't say so how to choose one of them. Okay. So, uh, in all hypothesis testing problems, uh, we must formulate two hypotheses. Not a single one, the one we want to test, but two, a pair of hypotheses. And one of them is called the null hypothesis and another one is called the alternative hypothesis. And they must uh, meet two conditions. Um, the null hypothesis must be simple and these two hypotheses must be mutually exclusive. The, the null and the alter alternative hypothesis, they must be mutually exclusive. This means that they, that they both cannot be true at the same time. Um, symbols that are usually used for uh, the null and the alternative hypothesis are HO and HA. So these, this is a couple of examples, like, uh, for example, the null hypothesis is that some parameter P is equal to one half, and the alternative hypothesis is that this parameter is greater than one half. So you see that both conditions are met. Uh, so the null hypothesis is a simple hypothesis, as we see that it, it is a hy hypothesis with equality sign, so P is equal to one half, so the null hypothesis allows only one single value for P, one half. Uh, and we see that uh, HO and HA are mutually exclusive, so that P cannot be at the same time equal to one half and be greater than one half. So everything is okay. Uh, mind that two hypotheses, that this pair of, of hypotheses, um, they can be not uh, collectively exhaustive. So you see that uh, besides these two options, p equal to one half and p greater than one half, uh, theoretically there is a third option that p is less than one half, but this option is not considered here. So. Uh, for some reasons, for example, we, we, we know that P is not less than one half in our case, and that is why we, we do not consider this option. And so these two hypotheses, they are not collectively exhaustive. So uh, as some a, a third option is theoretically possible. Uh, in second example, we see that uh, they are mutually exclusive and collectively exhaustive. So the null hypothesis, the simple hypothesis is that two random variables are independent and the alternative is that they are dependent. So this means that uh, either the null hypothesis or the alternative hypothesis must be true. And no third option is uh, possible here. So this is also a, a possible situation. So, uh, 
what does it mean for us? In practice, we usually want to test just one, one single hypothesis, not a pair of hypotheses, but just one. And so if our hypothesis, if a hypothesis of our interest is a simple one, then we, um, we take it as a null hypothesis. And the alternative hypothesis is just a, a negation of the null hypothesis. So for example, if we want to test a hypothesis that, that some parameter is equal to 3, then the, it will be the uh, null hypothesis, and the alternative hypothesis is that p is not equal to 3. If a hypothesis we want to test is that x and y are independent, then the alternative hypothesis is that x and y are dependent. So, if the hypothesis you want to test is a composite one, then it, in spite of the fact that this is initially the hypothesis you are going to test, uh, in spite of this, it should be treated as an alternative hypothesis, and you should uh, choose an, the null hypothesis, uh, a simple hypothesis as a pair, to, to, to accompany this hypothesis you are going to test. So you will, you, we will see how does it work just um, when we will solve examples on hypothesis testing. When you test a hypothesis, uh, you are to choose one of the two, the null hypothesis or the alternative one. So uh, you, you need to understand which one is more likely which one is uh, more, seems to be more probable. Uh, and so your answer is either I accept the null hypothesis and reject the alternative one, or I uh, reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternative one. So you are to choose one of the two. And when you do so, you can make two types of errors. Uh, type 1 error, or false positive, is when you reject the null hypothesis when it is actually true. So, you don't know whether the null hypothesis is true or not, but uh, after analyzing your observations, you choose to reject it. So, you don't believe that the null hypothesis is true, and you reject it, but, but it is actually true. So you make an error, and this type of error is type 1 error. So uh, for short, we can say that type 1 error is not to believe the truth. So the, hy the null hypothesis is true, but you don't believe it. Uh, type 2 error is um, to accept the null hypothesis when it is false. It is also called uh, false negative. So, you don't know whether the null hypothesis is true or false, but for some reasons you choose to accept it, but really, actually, this hypothesis is false. So, you make a mistake. So, we can say that type 2 error is to, to believe the untruth, to believe the false. So, uh, how, how this can be just uh, explained? Uh, let me say that, let me give an example. So, uh, let's say that I do a kind of, a, of an examination or a test uh, for my students. And so, there are students who know the mathematical statistics and there are students who don't know the mathematical statistics. And so a student comes and I want to test a hypothesis that he or she knows mathematical statistics. Uh, and so I ask him or her several questions and he or she answers and then I tell him, you passed or you did not pass. So, and if a student that actually don't, that actually doesn't know mathematical statistics passes my test, this means that uh, 
I, I have just made type 2 error. So my hypothesis that he knows statistics was false, but I accepted, I accepted this hypothesis uh, as he passed my test. Uh, and if a good student, a student that knows statistics, uh, doesn't pass the test, this means that I have just made the type 1 error. So my hypothesis is true, it's the student knows statistics, but he didn't pass the test, so I rejected this hypothesis. So as you can understand from this example, uh, if I have an intention to reduce the probability of type 1 error and at the same time an intention to reduce the probability of, th of the type 2 error, these two intentions contradict to each other. So why it is so? Uh, just let's, let's have a look on our example. Uh, if I want um, to reduce probability of type 1 error, if I want to reduce the number of type 1 errors I make, what should I do? I should be less suspicious when doing my test. I should believe my students. I should in interpret all, um, all some facts in favor of my students. If I do so, I will reduce number of good students who don't pass my test. Or even more, I, I can even guarantee that there will be no type 1 error, that no good, students, uh, no good student won't uh, pass my test. How? I can just tell, tell them, uh, you guys all have passed. So, uh, without any examination, without asking them uh, questions. So, uh, this will guarantee that there will be no type 1 error, but uh, there will be very many type 2 errors, as all bad students, all students who don't know statistics, all of them will also pass my test. So, uh, this means that if I want to reduce the probability of type 1 error, at the same time, uh, when, when I do so, when I'm reducing the probability of type 1 error, probability of type 2 error increases and vice versa. So if I want to reduce uh, the probability of the type 2 error, uh, so if I want, uh, if my goal is uh, not to allow uh, uh, any bad student, any student that d doesn't know statistics to pass my test, I should be not less but more suspicious. I should interpret all facts uh, not in favor of, of a student. And so, if I do so, I will reduce probability of type 2 error, or even I can, I can tell them, you guys all have not passed the test. So, uh, if I do so, I will guarantee that no cheater will pass my test. So, and, but, but a great number of good students also won't pass. So there will be a great number of uh, type 1 errors. So if I want to reduce the probability of type 1 error, probability of type 2 error increases. If I want to reduce probability of type 2 error, probability of type 1 error increases. So I, the, the thing is that we are to find uh, a kind of a balance between uh, between being uh, more suspicious and being less suspicious, between allowing multiple type 1 errors and allowing multiple type 2 errors. So, how this problem is solved, how this, this balance is found in practice? In practice we say that uh, let us uh, define uh, a significance level as a probability of type 1 error. So what we call a significance level in hypothesis testing problems is actually a probability of type 1 error and we usually use letter alpha. Uh, 
to denote uh, the significance level. And uh, probability not to make uh, type 1 error, so probability of the complement event that is equal to 1 minus alpha, is called uh, confidence level. So, and the way to solve this problem, a uh, problem of finding balance between type 1 and type 2 errors, is to fix a significance level, to choose a significance level not so very close to zero, but also not so very far from zero, uh, to choose a significance level such that uh, probability of type 2 error also will be not so very, uh, not so very high. And there is an empirical value, 0 0.05, the default value of the significance level. So um, it has it, it it was proved uh, that if you choose a significance level equal to 0 0.05, then probability of type 2 error also be an acceptable one. So not so very high and not so very low. So uh, and you always use this default value if you don't have any other ideas how to choose a significance level. So if you don't know, if you have no ideas what the significance level is to be in your problem, you can just say, let it be 0.05 or 5%, as they often say. Uh, they often say, let's, let's test this hypothesis at 5% significance level. So what does it actually mean? So 5% significance level. This means that, for example, uh, if, if we consider uh, one more time this example with the, with the students and test and exam. So uh, if I make my test for my students at 5% or 0 0.05 significance level, what does it mean? It, mean? it means that approximately 5% of my students will be those who know uh, statistics but did not pass the test. So if I, I am doing this at 5% significance level, uh, if I, I have, let's say, 100 students, after this test, after the exam, uh, it will just turn out that approximately 5 of these 100 students were those who knew who know the statist uh, mathematical statistics, but didn't pass the test. So this is uh, what do we mean saying 5% significance level. So I just said that uh, we, choose, we choose alpha equal to 0 0.05 if we have no ideas on just uh, what, how to choose alpha. But uh, how it can be that we have that we have an idea? How can we have an idea about this? So um, let me give another example. Uh, for example, you can you are a judge, and your task is to find a suspect either guilty or not guilty. And your and the null hypothesis is that the suspect is not guilty. And so what is type 1 error in this situation? So type 1 error is to find a person uh, that is not guilty, guilty. To, to find an innocent person guilty, this is type 1 error. And type 2 error to find a, a guilty person not guilty, to find a guilty person innocent. So this is type 2 error. And as a judge, you can say that what I'm afraid of uh, is, is to, to find an innocent person guilty. So this is much worse than to find uh, a guilty person innocent. And so you can say that I'm afraid of type 1 error much more than of type 2 error. And I want to, for the first task is to reduce probability of type 1 error. I don't want to, 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 to find innocent people guilty. 
And uh, so if 5% of all my decisions at the court will be finding innocent, innocent people guilty, so this means on average every, tw every 20th uh, decision is finding an innocent person, person guilty. So you can say, no, 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 it, it, it's, it's not good. Uh, I want to reduce this percentage. Uh, you can say that I want, for example, that uh, no more than 1% of all my decisions uh, are uh, finding innocent people guilty. So, and then you can say, aha, so I, I need to, to take uh, the significance level equal to not to 0 0.05, but to 0 0.01 or even less. So, uh, choosing, uh, choosing a significance level depends on, uh, so, uh, <coughs> which of the, of the two errors is worse for you, type 1 error or type 2 error. So, if, if uh, type 1 error is worse than type 2 error, you have reasons to, to think so, then you should take a significance level less than 0 0.05. If vice versa, uh, type 2 error is worse for you than type 1 error, then you should choose significance level greater than 0 0.05. So that is how you, you, you make a decision here. You, you choose a significance level. And if you have no ideas, if both errors, or uh, type 1 error and type 2 error, if they are both... Uh, um, how to say, or, or you, you, if you cannot say that uh, some of them, some of them is, is, is worse, uh, that some of them is the one you are afraid of more than of the other one, so then 0 0.05, the default value.